This tutorial will show you how to create a points-based analytic rubric. This means the point values are fixed for each level and criteria. If you want to see have different points for each criteria, you want to use a custom points rubric, and you should view that tutorial. So to do this, I'm going to click on the Edit Course tab on the nav bar. I'm going to click on Rubrics. Now, before you get to this stage and start creating a rubric, Remember that it's really important that you have your rubric mapped out completely before you go to the stage. So in my particular case, in Word, I did a rubric for English composition. I know exactly which levels I have. I have five levels and how many criteria I have. I have four criteria and then I have the overall score that I'm going to put in there because that's important too. So I have four criteria, five levels. I have each of the levels specifically with what they're supposed to be. Everything spelled out, all done, makes it you're going to make your life a lot easier to have it like this than to try to do it within my courses. So now that I have everything in, in the right order, I'm going to go ahead and click on New Rubric. I'm going to give the rubric a name. I'm going to choose the rubric status and you should note you have to keep it in draft as you create the rubric. You can put a description in there if you want. In the analytic rubric type I'm going to choose holistic. I'm going to choose the number of levels and I'm also going to choose the number of criteria. Remember since I have mine completely done and completely mapped out I know I need five levels and I have four criteria. So I'm going to choose five levels and four criteria. And then the scoring method I'm going to choose is points. Then I'm going to go ahead and click on Levels and Criterion. This will take you into the rubric, which is where I can now go ahead and edit the rubric. For the first step in this process is to click on each criterion and click on the little context menu next to the criterion and click Edit Criterion. What I'm going to do here, it'll show me each of the levels, level 5 being the highest level, and then level down to level 1. And we're going to change those names in a minute. In the description, this is what is required for each level. And again, what I'm going to do is go into Word. This is the first criterion, and I'm just going to go ahead and copy, put that on the clipboard, and I'm going to go in here and paste. I'm going to go over back to Word. I'm going to go ahead and copy and oops, and paste. Okay, once I have the first criterion done, I'm going to go ahead and click on save and I am going to go ahead and repeat that process for each criterion. So I forgot to mention that when you edit the criterion it's important you put the criterion name in there and again if you have everything spelled out inside of your mapped out rubric it's a very easy process just to copy and paste or type in the criterion name and then again click Save. So the next step in the process is to edit the criterion group so that I can change the names up in the levels here and change the points. So I'm going to click on the context menu next to criteria and click edit criterion group. You're going to see the levels here and I'm going to go ahead and put in the levels the same name and I'm going to put in how many points each of these levels are. Um, and again in this case since this is a hundred point assignment I'm going to say that every criterion here is worth 25 points and there's four criterion meaning that it's worth a hundred. So you have to kind of figure out all of that math ahead of time. You'll notice that the criterion group names are already, are already spelled down here. Oops, I'm sorry, these are the wrong, that's the wrong one. I'm going to go back to my thing up here and here it is, high proficiency and I already figured out the point values. And I'm going to just go ahead and copy and paste into this area. Once I have all the levels named and the points for each one of those levels, the criterion names have already been changed, I click Save. 
So the last step in the process now is to click on the context menu next to the overall score and I need to change the level names and what score they would get if they choose got every single one of these correct and every single or one of those correct so that the score adds up correctly. So I click on the context menu and click on edit levels. And again I'm going to change the level names and I'm going to do that by going back to this area and I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste and the difference here is I need to put in there a minimum score to achieve this level so again for me this particular assignment you have to figure the math out is the criterion there are four of them in this level it's 25 points each this is a hundred point assignment so if they get a 90 or better minimum of 90 and they would have an A for this it's great I go back up here back to my mapped out rubric again this is why you should have the rubric mapped out because if you don't it's going to be a little bit more confusing to think about all the math and all the things you have to do and since I have it all mapped out I know exactly what my scores are going to be and I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the rest of that once I have all of my um, overall score figured out I click on save and now I have a rubric that is well done and ready to go if I don't like it going from high to low or if I want it to go from low to high I can click on reverse level order and it would go from low to high as opposed to high to low whatever you want when you're all done click close and your rubric is about ready to go and to be used